Welcome to uh, our second to the last session. We have uh, two very dynamic discussions coming up. The first one I'm very pleased to have joined on the stage with me, uh, Chris McGraw from Procter & Gamble. Just a little bit about us. We had to um, implement the government pricing system and we had both um, over-the-counter health care products as well as our prescription products. And where we found the complexity is that on the over-the-counter products, since being such a huge consumer goods company, they really don't understand NDCs. They know they're on the labels, but that's about as far as it goes. Our price lists are very complex on the over-the-counter side because they actually do all kinds of different packages. They shrink wrap packages, there's displays. So what we found was on these price lists, we were having a hard time getting actually down to pulling out the actual products with those containing NDC numbers because of the UPC numbers, like there's a lot for display. So when they call and order the Prilosec displays, the stand-up displays, they have different UPC numbers. So we had to do so many filters to get down to just those over-the-counter products with NDC numbers. And we ended up doing all kinds of, we have like four pages of filters to actually drill down to just those NDCs um, that we need on the over-the-counter side. The over-the-counter side is in one of our legacy systems called order shipping and billing. So, like I said, they just don't really have any concerns with the NDC numbers. That was one of our biggest issues we had with pulling out the direct sales from order shipping and billing. Then on the pharmaceutical side, which is our other labeler code that we have to do filings with, is those are all in SAP. We've got 18 NDC numbers. And again, same situation for SAP because this was converted over and at the time when they set up SAP, um, everything was set up in there with eight digit list numbers because that's how the wholesalers call an order from us is from list numbers. So again, same situation, we had to convert the list numbers to the NDC numbers that we needed. And then we also had things that challenged us along the way with implementing government pricing system. We launched a new strength on the pharmaceutical side. We launched new package sizes. Then with the DRA changes, we had an authorized generic. So we were put through about every imaginable obstacle we could face along the way. Every one of those obstacles that we had was met by the system. That went backwards the other way. It's the green button, not the red one. <laughs> I want to go forward. So why we looked at getting a new government price system was because we knew that DRA was on the horizon and that our old system really was all mainframe based. And as we grew out of the mainframe system, um, they put the pharmaceuticals direct sales out of the mainframe and put them into SAP so we knew we had to change and get a government pricing system. So what we did was we looked at, did the analysis and said, how can we do this? The problem we had was that everything was so hard-coded with um, the mainframe that we really wanted to find something that didn't take a lot of IT intervention. P&G um, did sell off most of its IT to HP, and therefore it makes it kind of difficult to actually get a lot of the work we needed done. The old ways we were doing things was a mainframe report was generated, and I would actually have to review all the calculations couldn't see any of the drill down details, would have to make those corrections on paper, go back to IT to do some programming changes to put those back. And so it was an extremely manual process. As things were changing, then you would have your constant IT people changing positions, so they were not always familiar with how to change the codes in the mainframe. So that was the whole big issue with we had to resolve all these issues. Perfect, and just kind of putting in a picture for me, I mean, you heard Chris speak to the multiple systems that they had to put in, um, covering both the over-the-counter products as well as the prescription products. Um, iMeni was a piece of this, uh, bringing in some of the core IHS data, and of course, a lot of the manual processes uh, that were still being captured and calculated uh, via spreadsheets. So um, our objective was to use Model N in such a way that we could bring all of that data together to really support the, the uh, government pricing requirements that uh, Chris just spoke to. Um, the approach that we took was uh, to actually build a staging area um, and so these uh, seven or eight major areas of data actually came into a, a common staging area that P&G uh, supports today uh, on a daily basis where the transactions are being brought in 
and then using the standard model end data flow approach, we're actually capturing uh, that data and then bringing it into uh, bringing it into into the model and GP application for the actual calculation work. So it's kind of nice for us because we've got that data all coming into a common location. We bring it into a common format, almost similar to uh, what you might see from an from an EDI perspective, if you can kind of think of it in that sort of uh, general terms. Um, and then just, this is just another picture to show you uh, the, the process that we use to, to load that stuff into the data staging area. We tried to minimize as much of the sort of editing and some of the validation that was being done in the staging area. We still wanted to take advantage of some of the, the robust activity that could take place right out of the, the model end data flows. So there's a little bit of balancing work that we did in terms of trying to do some sorting and filtering of the activity of the data stage area. Uh, before it actually came across in the data flows to model N. But um, as you'll see later on, what we really hope this would do is it would set the stage so that uh, from a common platform perspective, as PNG decides to take on some additional modules within model N, that data, some of these data sources then can drop off because now they'll be resident within the model N application. So uh, a pretty important sort of forward thinking approach that we wanted to take uh, around the whole data stage approach. One of the things where Model N was very proactive was we also knew that because most of the people that had developed these mainframe systems were no longer with the company, we knew we weren't going to be able to do the integration work. We're, we're a very lean and mean organization, so we, we knew and we told them up front. So we had had um, IMS contract and compliance formally was Envision had done some diagnostic. We had been working with them several years to do our diagnostic testing. Um, do our policies, things like that. So we were upfront and honest with them, said we really need help in doing these codings to get this data into these data flow stages. So they did a part, we did partner with, um, actually Model N partnered with contract, correct. IMS's contract and compliance to help us on all these data flows. That's correct. I mean, and that's an excellent point. I'm sure many of you face this too. It was going to be very difficult for uh, a team our size to go back to SAP and say, you know, this is exactly the way we want your data coming over to Model N. So the data staging also provided us that flexibility to say, hey, you know, this is the kind of data we need. Can you give it to us and let us deal with the data once it got, uh, got to a Model N perspective? So we kind of really bridged the complexity and the uniqueness that each of the source systems brought to the requirements that we needed from a government pricing perspective. And again, just, uh, going I'm again. going backwards again. So I thought that felt like a, I felt like that was like Groundhog Day. It's a very great picture. So just further in detail where, I mean, when we talk about all these different source systems, um, I've mentioned our direct sales for pharmaceuticals is coming out of SAP because being a global company now, PNG is moving to put everything into the global um, SAP. We've got all the different boxes set up within SAP. Our OTC side is behind on schedule because of an acquisition that PNG did with Gillette. It put an extra stress on the work that we needed to get done because they were, um, HP was concentrating on that because of that acquisition. Things had to get put into OSB first. So we ran into some snags there. On our indirect sales, which is in Cars IS, we um, have our government contracts and our GPO contracts were there. At the same time, while we were implementing our government pricing system, we decided with um, Medicare that we really needed to start processing our managed care rebates at the claim level. So we did pull those out and go with um, IHS's I validate and I calculate. So we were actually had already done the planning and then we had to throw them another curve that said, here's another obstacle we have to work within to pull this other data, another new data source that we originally hadn't scoped out in the beginning. Again, putting more time onto what was already laid out to our time plan.